everyone, I'm sharing how I painted this Phileanopsis or moth orchid in watercolours. I mostly use Winsor Newton core watercolours and a few others uh, that I have on my palette and I normally use transparent or translucent watercolours and sometimes some opaque watercolours but the transparent watercolours are just absolutely beautiful. And let's start. I painted most of these petals already so I'm going to show you how I painted a few of them. So I wet the surface of the paper and I want the water to soak into the paper and then I pick up some of my beautiful red pigment. And you can see some of the core watercolors. The minute you touch your brush on the paper where there was water and where it was wet, the pigment just spreads all over the paper. It is absolutely a beautiful watercolor. I love core watercolors. They, the pigment is beautiful. Most of it is transparent. And you can see that I didn't wet my paper too much. I don't want uh, many puddles. I just want a soft sheen on my paper. And here are some of the colors that I used for this Phileanopsis orchid. Alizarin crimson and I used quinacridin magenta. I used some uh, quinacridin red. And this is how I normally wet my paper. Drop in some pigment and I love to layer. I normally go over my paper layer by layer and I try to prevent painting into certain parts where I want the paper to be wet or highlighted sections. And then I just drop some of the pigment on my paper and I leave some highlighted sections there so that I don't have to remove it. If I have to remove my watercolors I normally use a little scrubbing brush or my magic eraser. And then I just use a tissue to dab up the excess paint. You don't want to ruin your paper by scrubbing too hard on your paper. So make sure that you use a good quality watercolor paper. And some parts were a little bit blurry. It's just because I zoomed in. And I also draw a few little lines. Took my time with this beautiful painting. And I just wanted to have fun. And this is how far we are now. We still have very far to go. We have to paint another orchid at the top there. And I'm also going to paint a few little green parts of the stem and a leaf. And yeah, I am dropping in some wiggly brush strokes. I love adding a lot of detail to my flowers and the brush strokes are very important. So I, when I look at other artists, I always make sure that I look at the way they layer their paintings, how they add their colors and how they add detail. It's very important if you are a beginner to look at as many videos as you can. I hope I'm going to see you on Patreon to follow us and to paint us with us. And yeah, I shared what's happening in my studio. Uh, I sometimes share, um, you know, some previews with my students. And I also share the colors that I use and then the next part of the flowers that I will be painting. So I added another green flower bud about to open. Well, it's not about to open, it's going to open. But I'm sharing it as well, um, parts of it that I will be painting. And I added another flower petal on the right hand side at the bottom on the corner there. I must say it turned out beautiful. As you can see, lots of texture. This orchid had a lot of little dots and see-through sections on the petal. Especially if you shine a light from the back and you take a photo at night. The colors are absolutely beautiful. And this is Mr. T. I took him to the vet. 
we had to cut his nails. He absolutely freaks out when we cut his nails. His tongue turns blue because he hates it and he has a heart condition so we have to take him to the vet. So if you hear any snorting sounds or any barking and little walking uh, little footprint, footsteps on the floor, it is Mr. T or more than likely Sam or Ollie, which I will share uh, later on with you guys. Or if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see them often. But anyway, here we are now painting the little green stem on the bottom there and just adding some parts, uh, more detail on parts of these stems for the orchid as well. I do share step-by-step -step tutorials on Patreon so that I can show you exactly how I painted these orchids and even if, like I said many times, even if you are a beginner, you don't have to be scared. The only way you're going to learn is if you jump in and you paint. If you paint flowers, if you paint difficult flowers, if you paint easy flowers, the only thing that you have to do is you have to paint. The only way you're going to learn how to paint is by painting. And I painted many difficult flowers when I started painting in watercolors. I don't just paint, painted, I never painted the easy paintings. Uh, that is just easy. I did paint it when I started the first few months like the first three months but once I knew how to use wet on wet, wet on dry, uh, how to remove paint, how to do highlights, everything I started painting very difficult flowers because it's the only time you're going to learn. I also painted pet portraits, I painted shells, I painted everything. So the only way you're going to learn is by painting. So get out your paints and start painting. I think that is the only way you get to know your paint, you get to know your brushes, you get to feel the paper that you work on. The only way you will learn is by taking your time and get started. So what I suggest is also very good quality paper and a few quality brushes. Now you can get very cheap brushes that are very good, you can get very cheap paper that are very good. But I find that for certain paintings, I prefer a very good either art, hot press watercolor paper or Fabriano. So the reason why I mention these two papers is because those are the only ones that I can find at our art store uh, locally. So I haven't tested many others um, because they don't normally import all of those. I've tried another one from France, but it's very difficult to... Um, get that paper yeah so I buy these online and um, certain other papers that are much cheaper I buy from the local little art store that is about an hour away where I find all of my books and my cheaper versions of paper where I normally do my short tutorials on for YouTube or for uh, certain practices so I can highly recommend a very good quality watercolor paper, but that's all up to you. I'm not saying it, uh, you know, cheap paper might not work for you, but for my style of painting, I prefer a very good watercolor paper. Now, the reason why I mentioned Mr. T is because at the moment, while I'm doing this quick voiceover, he's snoring here next to me. <laughs> it is very cold here today and it's cloudy. Uh, we are expecting 70% uh, of rain. Uh, we've had so much rain already because it's our winter rain for uh, this time during the winter. Anyway, so you might hear Mr. T snore, so he's very cuddled up and warm here next to me. And of course, when he's in a blanket, he snores. I don't know why, it just does something to him. But anyway, I'm mixing some green here. Now, the reason why I don't mix my own green with, for instance, uh, French ultramarine or a beautiful blue and a yellow is because I have a lot of beginners in um, on Patreon that paint with already mixed greens we will only later on start mixing our own greens um, but what I do with this color is I want a very brown mix now so I take the red mix that I have on my palette there and I mix it with the sub green to create a darker green it creates a the dark green that you can see on that one stem there for the orchid that's what I'm looking for and that's how I got that color so I just need some more tissue paper, always have tissue paper near me 
because you always uh, wipe your brush on there it doesn't hurt your fibers of your brushes and you always want to wipe your brush on there uh, you can also use a cloth there are many different options that you can use many artists have their own style and eventually you will develop your own uh, style you will maybe use a cloth or you will use tissue paper but whatever you do just start painting it is fun it's relaxing and it will change your life I promise you so here we just dropping in some of that darker green mix and you can see I mix it on the one side because I want that side to be darker because the light is coming from the right hand side and I just move my brush around and then I soften all of those darker little colors again I ran out of the colors so now I have to mix a quick green again and that's what you are looking for consistency and color wise that's what you want I'm just darkening that one side of the stem and then I just stipple my brush on the sides there and then softly I wiggle it to soften those watercolor markings okay mr. T is snoring here I'm just gonna quickly move him around so that he doesn't snore too loud just hang on a sec Okay, I don't think I have much chance in stopping him from snoring but um, I hope to see you on Patreon where you can join us step by step on Patreon you get the line drawing you get the color chart of all the colors that I used and you also get a booklet with everything in that you can keep forever on Patreon you can cancel anytime uh, you can join anytime and you will only be charged on the same day the next month. I will see you soon with another new tutorial.